The following program is a presentation of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio in iTunes. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market. From unusual activity alerts to market updates and trading strategies. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block. With your host, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com. And co-hosts, Mike Tussaw from KnowYourOptionsInc.com and Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. The Option Block is brought to you by Options Express. Don't spend time worrying about your broker. At Options Express, security, stability, and account protection are the most important responsibilities to our customers. Secure account access, enhanced financial protection, entrusted with over $7 billion in customer assets, established financial stability. Options Express lets you trade with confidence. Stocks, options, and futures, all in one account. Trade with a specialist. Visit optionsexpress.com slash OX radio to open your free account. Options Express is a member of FINRA, SIPC, and NFA. And welcome back to the Option Block. It is our episode 100, and none of us here on the panel can believe we've actually done 100 of these. And actually, I think if you add in maybe a few of the sneak previews and some of the other live events we've done, we may even be actually over 100. I haven't actually gone through the list and counted them down. But nonetheless, it's been quite the fun run so far with the Option Block, and we're looking forward to Many more exciting episodes to come. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com as well as many of the programs here on the old Options Insider radio network. And before we dive into anything else, we have good old Monday Mike on the program here. I know a lot of our listeners are concerned, so give a favor, a favor and give our listeners a, a quick update on how, uh, on how Uncle Mike and his family are faring and given all the, uh, the trying circumstances that they're going through right now. Yeah, and they've been through a lot, and, you know, there's, there's not one thing I can say to express, you know, everybody's thoughts. Um, you know, we've gotten emails, we've gotten people that listen to the show, all appreciated from Mike. That comes from Mike. You know, I try to keep him updated as much as possible of all the people that have sent in well wishes. Um, without going into the specifics of the, the family crisis, it was a family crisis, and it seems to uh, it seems to be ending at this point. I, I mean, I don't want to say ending well, but, you know, uh, Mike's wife is back from the hospital and uh, they're moving on with their life, so to speak. Yes, it's good to hear that she's back and at least for the time being doing well. And I know a lot of our listeners have reached out to him in various forms. I see a bunch of them posting even on our forum. So it's good to see that people are reaching out with their support for Uncle Mike and his family in this. Uh, yeah, very well, you know, I spent a lot of my time being kind of a clown, but uh, you know, my my heart, my family's heart, and, you know, I just, you know, Mike's been in my thoughts and in my prayers and this whole time and his wife and his family. So uh, we're praying for you, Guy, and we can't wait to get you back on, uh, back on the show. And that voice was Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. We are also joined today for this 100-episode Subdued Spectacular by Mr. John Grigas from Options Express. John, welcome back to the show. Yeah, thanks. Uh, wish I was here under better circumstances, as uh, Rob informed me Thursday. But uh, Tucson, you know, worked here prior to going over to uh, Know Your Options. So, you know, we've all been uh, thinking about him over the last five days. I'm glad to hear that his wife's doing better, if you can say that. Um, but yes, but it's good to be on the show. It's good to, it's good to see uh, Kavanaugh coming in here too to give us an update. And of course, this is our episode 100, so would, we would be remiss if we didn't at least have something celebratory or some change to discuss. And of course, 
regular listeners to the show, if you have indeed visited the Options Insider today, you were greeted by a brand spanking new website, a new design, a new layout for your viewing and listening pleasure. We actually launched the Options Insider way back in January of 2007, so we did most of the design and coding work back in 2006, so as you can imagine, that is an eternity in web years and we thought the thought we needed a nice little tweak the old design was working well but the the way people have used content on the site the way what people are coming for on the site these days has evolved over the past four plus years and and of course perhaps most relevant for listeners of this program is that the radio network is now delivered much more prominently and integrated much more seamlessly with the overall website as well. So now if you go to the optionsinsider.com, you have multiple opportunities to click on the Options Insider radio network. You have overlays for the various shows, complete with cover art and descriptions and all sorts of fun stuff. So if you are an Options Insider radio listener, this will make it even easier for you to tune in to our programs down the road. So by all means, surf on over to the optionsinsider.com and take a test drive of our new design and kick the tires and light the fires as they say and let us know what you think if you like it if you don't like it and we will uh, continue tweaking and upgrading as the weeks and months go on we wanted to let our listeners know about that before we kick off the show because there is a lot of something at least something fun to discuss here on our episode 100 all right, and with the intros all complete and the team assembled we're going to dive right into the trading block the trading block and welcome to the trading block this is of course the portion of the show where we discuss what's trading what's moving the markets today what's lighting up the tape and it was a bit of an update today usually about one percent across the board in terms of the s p and the dow but the tech-heavy Nasdaq was leading the charge today, up about two and a half percent, or 62 handles to about 27, almost 2,700 even. And the VIX coming off a wee bit, about 6.7 percent, or 2.1 points to 29.21. So yet another rally here in the broad markets. Mr. Grigas, Mr. Kavanaugh, what were you guys particularly paying attention to today in today's? Uh, I guess you can call it light run-up. Well, I. I had uh, mentioned this probably on pre- previous shows, but as far as lunch bets go at work, I'm, I'm undefeated. So, I mean, any, anytime people start shooting their mouth off about where the market's going, I always like to have them put some money on the line because, you know, that's what trading's about. Obviously, this is on a smaller scale. Uh, so, two and a half weeks ago, we were trading at uh, 1150, and everybody's bearish, you know, waiting for this European thing. And, of course, uh, you know, contrary to everybody else, I'm saying, hey, look, I think we're going higher. and and usually I'm wrong, but uh, when it comes to lunch bets, I've been right. And uh, so we went 100 points up, 100 points down, and today uh, we hit 1250. So I got uh, lunch on, on the house today for one of our brokers. But really, everyone can't believe this rally. Everyone's saying it's short covering. I've been reading the blogs today and and, and the notes and, and uh, the comments on the, on the uh, website, and everyone's continuing to sell into this rally. And I just think that'll perpetuate it and keep this rally going for a little bit further. I think. When we have a decision out of Europe, that might be the time to get short. I think you know the, the rally has foreseen that maybe the issues out there um, aren't going to be as drastic as they think, and that, that people are selling into bad news that's maybe just not going to materialize. And so I, I think we're going to continue higher. So the, the broader markets, E mini S and P, I mean th- that's what uh, what we've been watching here at Options Express, and also crude oil. Uh, if anybody caught crude oil today, it was, it was up about four bucks. It's still trading. Got another hour to go. And the two things that they were saying on the tape that was causing that rally was, uh, one, the manufacturing import uh, from China, and two, uh, they do aerial satellite photos of Cushing's Oklahoma stockpiles, and they can notice these uh, satellite photos that the stockpiles had dropped, I think, uh, 26% since April. But from the last time they took these photos, I think they were down about 7%. And they're saying that's leading to some of the rally as well. Um, technically, if you look at it on a chart, it just looks like a bottom was found last month. And uh, we're coming off, off those uh, off those lows, but really the, the broader markets and and, and crude oil were front and center today at Options Express. Just plays into that continuing narrative about how all the asset classes are correlated these days, and if you're diversifying across asset classes, you can't catch a break. Well, that's why volatility is an asset class now, I guess, huh? 
Exactly, exactly. Unless you're savvy with derivatives, it is very difficult to find good inverse correlation or hedging uh, for your portfolio yeah, I mean, these days. I mean, cash, maybe. I don't. I mean, there's really not much. Uh, gold had broken, but now is not. Oil, not. I mean, yeah. I mean, everything's kind of in lockstep right now. Although you think that gold and the market would be opposite, and just just not. So, are you seeing Netflix getting crushed again after the bell? I was just about to pull that up. It is, of course, it is live as we speak. Earnings uh, time back for hundred. Yeah, for, oh, come for on, are you serious? Yeah, for yeah. the Widowmaker, ninety-six and a half. It closed at one eight, nearly one nineteen today, and trading ninety-six fifty right now in the after hours. So they're having a subscriber implosion. Uh, is what it sounds like. I mean, to put that in perspective, like two weeks ago, I bought the one sixty-five calls, and it's it's below a hundred right now. Oh, it's horrible. That's why they call it the Widowmaker. It just it breaks hearts nonstop. This thing it is unbelievable. Talk about I, it, rare. It is rare in modern times to see such an implosion of a company. Uh, you know they 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 were riding the crest of the tech wave of the love. Uh, they are they are the the internet Enron. In well, a lot of that's ways. exactly so what I was going to say. The only other comparison I could think of is company. Enron. The only time I've seen a, a big company fold this fast was Enron. If you guys remember back in the Enron debacle, when Enron hit 20, everyone and their mother I knew on the floor, off the floor, was calling me up saying, you got to hit these 20 puts. This is the best sale on the planet. This is like IBM dropping below 20 and everyone. And yet uh, we all know how that turned out. And that one. Yeah, I, I mean, my thoughts are. I mean, I think you got to keep riding this thing. It is an. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible company, apparently. And apparently, and, they have uh, no direction the whatsoever. Done. The dream is done. So. <laughs> you had your run up, but you missed your chance if you didn't pick it up. But yeah, Netflix just, just yeah, it's, it looks like yeah, it's still selling off in the after hours. About ninety five, <laughs> eighty now. I thought it might have caught a bid there, but no. Uh, ninety five half now, John. I'm sorry, those calls not looking like they're coming back anytime soon, sir. No, they were worthless. Uh, literally within 20 minutes, they just dropped another like 15 bucks the next day. I, I liked it. You know, obviously the sell-off was huge, right? I mean, it went from 300 to 150. I mean, at some point, you think there's there's going to be a bounce. There really hasn't been a bounce. All it does is take a breath and then continues lower. I think Sebastian's right. I mean, what, what, where's the bottom here? Anyone have any, you know, drastic guesses? I don't know. What is what is their NAV at this point? <laughs> what do, what do they have book value that they can dump that has any value to them? I mean, they're they're losing customers left and right. They yeah, have they multiple 20, 28 million customers last quarter, something like that. Yeah. That's unbelievable. You know, I mean, they, they don't screw up that much. Well, ask ask Groupon. I mean, they're screwing it up, and they're not even public yet. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, they're, yeah, they're terrible. But we all know Groupon is a Ponzi scheme. Netflix had the, at least the appearance of a legitimate business for a while there, and then just completely imploded. And then they had. Yeah, this is a Ponzi scheme. That's exactly what it is, pretty much. Group- Gruponzi. Gruponzi, exactly. I mean, they, they've been raising money for a while, and all of it just goes back to their investors. Very little goes into the business. Look at the, they were they were double, essentially double dipping on their revenue count for going into their IPO. So a lot, lot of fun stuff going on over there before they even go public. Uh, so, I mean, did they, they make them a huge mistake by not selling a Google for $6 million? I think so. I, I, think, yeah. I think they will eventually come to uh, rue that decision, just like Yahoo probably rues the day they turned down Microsoft. I uh, know those massive deals only come along once in a while. There's only a handful of companies who can pay that stuff. Right, and, and you know the issue for Groupon is living social is Groupon but well run. Exactly. So. You, have, you have Amazon playing in their camp now. You have Google playing in their camp now. I mean, if you had a choice of taking Google's money or competing against Google's dollars, I probably would take the former. And uh, they had a they had a chance for that, and now it's just uh, I mean Google has nearly infinite money to pour into that space. They don't have to make money on the, on it. They can just continue to chip away, and just like Microsoft did for years in the browser space and everything else, and they eventually won. And so yeah, that that's a that's a difficult proposition to overcome. You have Amazon coming at it from the other angle, also chipping away at their share. There's, there's not exactly much loyalty in the uh, daily deal customer community. At least I wouldn't think so. Well, actually, if there is, it's loyalty against Groupon. I'll talk to anybody that's used them. <laughs> and they're, you know, the, the, the problem is, is you think you've got a good relationship with them, and then they sell to one of your competitors the next day, you know, or uh, ahead of you. So they, uh, they, they are not the, the masters that they, uh, of implementation, let's just say. 
No, so, no, I think they've uh, they've turned a lot of people sour on that whole model. And I talk to a lot of just local merchants whenever I try using one of those things, and it's always been a, a negative experience for the bulk of them that I've talked to anecdotally here in and around Chicago. And uh, Mr. Sebastian, what were you watching today in good old VIX land? You think this sell off uh, VIX is not VIX is not buying what what the market is selling? No, uh, not even remotely. I mean, it's interesting. We are since Friday the 14th. We are up about two percent. If you look at the SPX, you know we closed around 12, uh, 12.25. We're now 12.54. That's still you know, almost two and a half percent almost. And the VIX is up about 5% too. So it's about three or 4%. So a situation where the market is rallying and the VIX is rallying does not instill confidence in, in many of the trader. And, uh, and that is uh, why you and I always say, you know, I sat down Mark, at the money show probably about uh, a half an hour after you. And they said, well, what would you like to talk about? I said, the VIX. And, and they said, oh, yeah, what subject? I said, you know how, how you need to look at it in relative terms? They're like, long already did it. <laughs> <laughs> I told them. When they told me who was coming after me, I said, I, I bet you I bet you he's going to want to talk about this exact same topic, the contextual VIX. I beat you and, by about an hour. And, and, and I did. So I did, I did a couple other things, but it, it went really well. And, uh, and I was disappointed you had already bolted, by the way. Um, hey, I had the lunch offer there, but I, I had to run. I, I, I know. I would have gladly met up with you. It was but, a uh, short-term offer, high theta on that deal. Yeah, I could, I could sense that. Uh, you, and, you and a separation of your wallet are a quick thing to happen. <laughs> um, but in, in truth, though, I mean, that should spell out to traders exactly what's going on, that VIX is not selling off as, the, as we're rallying. If anything, it, it's really holding up. You know, we're now basically sitting at where we were before this whole mess started. If you look at SPX, we're actually right at where we closed on August 3rd, believe it or not. So we're right around where we where we opened on our, where we, actually, one minute, we're where we, if you go to August 2nd, we, you know, we closed at 12.54.05. We're higher than that now. So uh, we're actually have fully recovered from this kind of uh, the major damage, yet volatility is way higher, a full 10%. So just goes to show you kind of how powerful this uh, fear is in Europe and how little people are, are believing what's going on. Yeah, I mean, it just, just shows me, put it in context like that, you know, how it really it does, a, it definitely is a different beast than when you see VIX just bandied about as this wholesale standalone number and that, like that has any meaning in and of itself. Uh, you know, people people really, they they neglect the bigger picture when they don't look at the whole the whole picture, I suppose you could say, when uh, they're not looking at S&P and Time Decay and all the other fun stuff that goes into looking at the VIX on a regular basis. Uh, anything else you want to toss in there, Auntie Mike, or anything else, or John, before we roll into the odd block? Yeah, I just want to say, go ahead. No, go, you go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, you go. Um, mine was on something else that Sebastian already covered. Go ahead. Mine, uh, what I, it, kind of the same thing, just to, to make one point. The, the S&P is roughly unchanged on the year. I mean, I think it started the year at 1257. We're at 1254. Volume has been somewhat lacking on this up move. Um, the VIX is still close to 30. I mean, my sentiments are until this whole thing is Europe in Europe is cleaned up, uh, we're going to rift around. Um, just, just notice that we're right basically where we started the year on the S&P. I like it. But I, what I was going to say is that if, if you're worried about Europe and you're worried about the VIX really hasn't pulled down compared to the, you know, what the SPX move has done, aren't you kind of missing out on a pretty big rally here? You know, you are, but the way the VIX is pricing, you're going to get a chance to buy back in is kind of my thoughts. And, you know, I would be, you know, if you don't want to fade this rally, I would certainly be selling time spreads against it or buying straddles because um, I am not a, you know, I, I just not believe in a single thing I'm looking at. And, uh, and, and I think that's, that's kind of the, the issue here is I believe this rally all the way up to about, 
up till the 14th, then, then everything stopped being believable to me. So I've given up, if I've given up 3% to avoid a, a trip back to 1150, I'll live. You know, that's kind of my thoughts. <laughs> Mark Sebastian, the degenerate premium buyer these days. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, well, I was always a little bit of a, of a primo hog, and uh, I, I could still continue to think that uh, what I would say is long realized volatility, short, short implied volatility is going to continue to be the play that, that we use. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been fading this rally for days, and I've even picked up some net units myself just because this is, uh, like I said, I, I have no I have no faith at all in where we are right now, and uh, I want units to the downside in case we... Uh, in case we inevitably begin that uh, dark descent that the, that the VIX is predicting. All right, and with that, we're going to close out the old trading block and roll right into the odd block. The odd block. And welcome to the Odd Block. This is, of course, the portion of the show where we discuss the interesting and or the unusual options activity that is lighting up the tape today. First things first, going to kick things off with one of Sebastian's favorites. In fact, he's emailing a suggestion to one of his clients to buy it right now, and that is BAC. Ticker or BAC. That is Bank BAC. Of, <laughs> that is Bank of America, ticker symbol BAC, closed today. How can I lose? Yeah, exactly. Well, someone's uh, someone's thinking the other side of that today. We got about uh, close today at $6.72, up about $0.26 cents or 4%. This is the name that we've discussed quite a few times in the past on the program as approaching the new, uh, the new city. So there's a lot of that fluff volume going on in and around BAC. But there was a couple of interesting trades going up today. It looks like the bulk of them were in some size call selling. And you got to keep size in perspective on this name because this is a very, very active name. But we saw five relatively sizable blocks of the October 6 calls going up today in pretty much rapid succession. They were all 10,000 lot blocks. So 50,000 or so contracts of these OXIP 6 calls went up pretty quick. The bulk of them on the bid or a penny within a penny of the bid. So it looks like heavy selling activity on these. And this is a strike that has about 6,700 contracts open. So this is all opening paper here on the OX 6s. These are weekly spear in mind, so not going to have much in the way of, of open interest on these names regardless. But still, a lot of size opening paper dumping these for around, I believe the uh, the price was around 60 cents or so, the bulk of these trades. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, how can, how can yeah. that lose? Yeah, it hasn't... Uh, this company isn't going to go to business in the next couple of weeks. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but that is just silly, stupid trading. And I don't know who thinks that's a great idea. Whoever is telling these people to sell these puts. You no, know, no, calls, calls. These are calls. Oxix six calls. calls. Oh, yeah. they sold the six calls? Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering, oh, that's a great trade. I was wondering where, you were, where you were going with that for a second. I was, although, I was about although, to say, was this your it. trade? I mean that that's a that's a great trade. I'm all about that one. Um, you know that's that's probably exactly where Bank of America should be at the end of the week, and then they can sell the fives next week, the fours the next week, and then uh, eventually buy some puts because this sucker is going to zero. <laughs> Mr. Grigas, you're just uh, you're just <laughs> lighting up the tape these days. I'm, I'm just shaking my head. Hey, uh, actually, I don't own it. My son does because it's in his custodial account. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, one of those. Yeah, I, with, ones. I was like, God, Bank of America's got to be a, a buy behind ten. And I remember like you know transferring some money over and rushing to get it and you know being happy for about I don't know. 36 hours and then you know just having the bottom fall out of that trade. You follow the Buffett wave then right into Bank of America. Oh, I bought it about. Seven days before Buffett, or you know, two weeks before Buffett, and I'm like, oh man! And then it popped up to 870 in the pre-market, and I was like, oh, this is great. Maybe I, you know, I wish I'd bought more, you know, six fifty, seven dollars, and then man, it's just. But I, I have to agree with Sebastian. Though. I mean, the word on the street is people are like that bank's done. I, I I can't imagine that's going to happen, but you know, obviously we've seen it before. Yeah, this is probably an underlying guy hitting against a lot of his uh, putting in some in the money covered calls now. But, yeah, uh, I, I don't know what Warren was thinking, but the Oracle of Omaha. Is allowed to make mistakes and does make mistakes. People forget that that even the best investor makes mistakes. And 
you know, he had took massive derivative losses on a couple of, of occasions and has done, you know, he misses all of the time. You know, it's like, you know, he's a billionaire because he's right more often than he than he's not right. Not because he's never wrong. And this is going to be one where he's going to lose and lose bad. Yeah, well, people always remember him for his his ex, you know, his uh, inflammatory comments about derivatives, but he does dive into all these products on a very regular basis. How's his long term put sale on Goldman looking here? These I haven't I haven't looked in that one in a while. I forgot what level he sold there, but uh, he was still short at ninety, I think. Is he? Okay. So, yeah, he's fine. He's doing he's all right fine. there. <laughs> he's yeah. doing all right. A little better maybe than his uh, BAC holdings right now. But yeah, a lot of people not buying the uh, the rally today in Bank of America and looking at this as an opportunity, either underlying holders or outright specs to uh, to dump this guy. When's um, not an earnings play on this one. And then we're going to move into, I think, Mr. Grigas's favorite name of all time, also in his son's custodial account, H.J. Hines and Company, ticker symbol HNZ. You, you a big ketchup slinger these days, Grigas? Yep, I put it on the hot dogs. I know it's a cardinal sin in Chicago. Oh, you're talking about the options stock? No, not not too much. <laughs> but uh, um, we do have clients that do trade it here at Options Express. Myself, no, I haven't. I don't have it in the custodial portfolio for my son. Although, at this point, I think I might start letting him pick the stocks because uh, you know I'm, I'm 0 for five here. <laughs> Did you also put those <laughs> Netflix calls in the son's account? No, I put those in mind, but I, you know, I, I honestly, I probably, he would probably like Pixar, you know, some of these, you know, Disney. I mean, some of these stocks he probably would pick would probably be pretty good, as, as opposed to me slinging the financials and, and watching his. Uh, oh, hey, Ivy League. Okay, yeah. State College. Okay, hey, community, community College, college. is a fine Homeschool. place to go these days. You know? <laughs> Homeschool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, so it, oh, that's great. <laughs> that's kind of that's the, the the thing we the sign we have up on his bedroom. So. If your son, if your son's listening right now, he just wiped away a little tear. But uh, yeah. poor so. poor Mr. Grigas Jr. But yes, Heinz, not many, not too many lovers of Heinz today. The market it closed today at fifty three oh two, down about thirty three cents. This is the name that does about thirteen hundred contracts a day, so not exactly. Lighten up the tape, and we saw, for this name anyway, a very sizable trade going up, a very sizable bearish ratio put spread going up today in Heinz. We saw a trader coming in, picking up the D's 50-55 put spread on a 3 by one ratio. He did it 6,000 by 2,000 times. So he did 8,000 contracts in a name that does barely 1,000 a day. He ended up paying a net debit of about 62, about 62 and a half cents, and um, this one... Go- this one, yeah, let's see. Hold on one second here. Um, yeah, so this stock obviously gapping up on volume today given the size of this put spread. He bought uh, he bought three of the 50s to sell one of the 55s. And uh, it was, yeah, an interesting trade going on today in Heinz. I don't really follow the ketchup land, which is or the, com- or the condiment land in general, which is why I thought this was a fun one to bring up, bring, breaking us out of our traditional retail and Hasbro and drug stock. Uh, rut that we seem to fall into on the odd vlog every now and then. They do have earnings on the 18th, so this could be an earnings play as well. But a lot of bearish, bearish paper coming in right now in uh, in Heinz. Both of these strikes have negligible open interest, 300 and 500 contracts each, so all opening paper. And I, as soon as I saw this ratio, I started thinking Monday, Mike. So uh, what do you what do you think of Monday, Mike? Is this you putting on a nice KYO patented ratio to the downside here in Heinz? It it was not um, the the ratios we we tend to look for current holdings, you know all of our current holdings in the last you know other than Apple and Ford stocks I'd say in the last six months we've been leaning more towards the uh, sectors you know the XL XLK XLY XLV XLU down the road um, th- this was not us playing in the ratio world the the ratio seems too clean where you know we're usually 50 to 1 this is this oh, is right. really 3 to little, 1 little yeah. little light yeah, this, yeah this well is- i heard i heard that times are so tough they're going to have to switch to 56 varieties <laughs> wah, wah. there we go hey they're not all winners folks all right and with the catch up and with the buffett bank behind us we will close out the old odd block and roll right into the express block 
The Express Block, brought to you by Options Express. Options Express lets you trade where and when you want for every level of trading, from advanced charting, free daily trading ideas, and free educational resources. Options Express is the online broker for all traders. Best of all, Options Express allows you to trade stocks, options, and futures all in a single account on powerful yet easy to use trading platforms including mobile devices. Visit optionsexpress.com/oxradio for your free account. Options Express Express is a member of FINRA, SIPC, and NFA. And welcome to the Express Block. This is, of course, the portion of the show when the boys from OX take the reins and I sit back and have a nice frosty beverage. And Mr. Grigas, I have the, the little birdies are telling me here that I think you you had some interesting calls coming in yeah. this morning in yeah. rapid succession, no less. I, I love Monday mornings after expiration. Uh, you know, Obviously, the weeklies aren't as fun, but the monthlies, I always get a... Uh, a few calls to start off my morning that really, really get me in the mood, you know, to to, to love the work that I do. Uh, but so, this morning, uh, you know, eight thirty-two, two minutes into the to the uh, session of the trading. That's right I, when you friend, want the complaints to start rolling in. Is it eight thirty-two? Too the nice way to start off the day. Yeah, I had my diet Mountain Dew, you know, because it was warm out this morning. When it's cold, I switched to the to the coffee. But uh, it, it was it, it was. I was assigned on an out of the money put. The, the, there's no rules and options. I signed a, a contract. You know, he sold the, the 90 puts in Fossil. And if you take a look at the chart, you can see that on Friday, Fossil closed at 90.03. All right, no big deal. 16 years, this guy's got trading experience. You know, large account. This will be easy. I'll be on the, in the next call here in 30 seconds. You know, went through the whole spiel that, that hey, you can be assigned American options anytime. They can be. While unlikely, out of the money uh, options when they assigned, and he didn't understand that. I thought that you know that this is literally, you know, I could see the guy's traded for a long time, and he, he and, and I can't believe that he's never come across this before. And he says it's happened with calls, but it, calls are different than puts. When he says you can do out of the money, you know, be assigned on an out of the money call, but not an out of the money put. So he got he got assigned here. So he should oh, be, he should be he should be loving be life right now. assigned an out of the money call, but not an out of the money put. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, you know, didn't see what the difference was, That's and what made me so. I mean, I'm on the phone. I'm Mr. Nice Guy. I mean, I, I really am there just to teach people. And and I, and I remember my first, you know, like we had all talked. Our first day on the floor. Here's your Natenberg. Here's your, you know, badge. You know, start learning. You know, I remember that day. So you know, I take a step back, go real slow, and there must have been, you know, something in the tone of my voice that he did not like. But it, the call went downhill uh, really click, uh, quickly. I, you know, I would say that he was kind of saying what my wife would say: "You're listening to me, but you're not hearing me." You know, <laughs> he he believed, and, and this is the point that I miss. And so I guess, you know, I have to do a better job of listening to people. But he believed that he was assigned the stock on a call basis at 9003. And that the contract holder was able to manipulate the stock, the strike price, and change it on him. And I did not see that. But 15, 20 minutes, all we all we were going through was on, uh, you know, assignment on out of the money put. So understand that you can be assigned call or put early or on expiration weekend. That you can be assigned on out of the money options. Um, well, that's why we always so we, say on this show to close them out if you're anywhere close to the strike and you're short and you're worried about that sort so of thing let or me, you're uncertain. Let me make this straight. And plus, these guys should be thanking you. This guy's and, printing and, money right now. And 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 just think how the call would have went. But Fossil was up, so he got a you know the, the exercise holder made a wrong choice or wrong call, and the stock was up, and the guy actually made more money on it than he than he would have. The guy just made a free aid handles. He should be kissing you over the phone. Yeah. <laughs> So let me get this straight. So the guy thought the guy's been trading options for years, right? You, you said over 15 years. Yeah, over 15 years. And he was certain that he had been had to pay an extra 30 cents, three cents. Yeah, three An extra three cents. So I'm a little, you know, I had to pass him. He's like, can I talk to somebody else? And, and I'm like, fine. So I, I get into somebody else. And of course, get him on uh, hard with Ned. Get him on the horse. Yeah. Or Joe, right? Yeah. So I go to get like a water because I'm physically, not, you know, I'm like, you know, not upset, but I'm like, man, I, I can't believe the guy was like accusing me of not knowing what I was doing. And so sit down, next call. I, I, I didn't see where Priceline closed on uh, Friday, but this guy was worried about in the money options. Uh, he was, I believe, short a call spread um, in between strikes. I don't know if I, does anybody have, I know where Priceline closed on Friday, but let me see what the net change was for today. 
Uh, it was up, tw- Jesus, 24 bucks. <laughs> so figure right right around 494 and a quarter, so, you know, somewhere in that area, 494 and a half. So he was short the 495. Uh, now I'm getting confused. He was short the 490 calls along the 495, something like that. So the calls were in the money in between strikes. And he was like, oh, what do I, what do, I, what do, I do here? And we're like, well, you know, he didn't have the money to take the assignment, to, you know, or short deliver the stock. So he's like, all right, I want to hedge my position on the assumption I'm, I'm going to get a sign. The broker over and over, so there's no guarantee you're going to get a sign. Okay, so I, I ble- he, he hedged himself in the aftermarket, doesn't get a sign on anything, and instead of waking up Monday morning believing he's going to be flat, he now has his position on and he's screaming at us because we told, you know, you, hit, you must be assigned on in-the-money options. You know, I mean, it just it blew my mind that I had these back-to-back calls within 20 minutes of, of people who've done this for years, you know, and, and are telling me that, you know, you, you should be, all out-of-the-money options will be abandoned and all in-the-money options must be assigned. Um, so on, on the second note, and the second part, you know, if you're trading Google, Priceline, Amazon, I mean, we do uh, contraries all the time uh, when people don't have the money and we couldn't close a position and we're not going to hedge them in the stock. So, I mean, realize that those large price uh, stocks, you, you may not be assigned as well. And so, you know, feel free to hedge at your own risk in, in the aftermarket. There's another guy, by the way, who, if he hedged, is is pretty happy right now. <laughs> right. Yeah, he, no he, kidding. He, he, he <laughs> did, but then he, but then he closed the hedge in the pre-market at like 4.95 or oh. something like that, and, and that stock was. Up why there. would he close that? Why would he close the hedge in the pre-market? Because he didn't get a, he didn't get a sign on it, so he's like, oh, I don't want to even take this risk, and he closed it in the pre-market. I didn't see what the spread was in the pre-market, but I. You know, immediately it was trading around five fourteen. See, you know? that's what he was really mad about. He wanted someone to vent at the fact that he took his his hedge off too early and was stupid about it, and so he wanted to just call and just vent. No, yeah. people get much more angry at missed profits than they do at anything else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and then the third thing I just wanted to, you know, we had talked about this a week and a half ago about the launch of S- SPX PMs. Um, it, it, what do they say, Longo? Buy it once, SPX PM. Yeah, buy it once. They they really hitting on the uh, one by ten uh, difference between the spy options and the SPX. They say yeah. Save, when you, you, know, you mentioned the update to your website, I ran over there and I was like, whoa, the, the, the new banner ad over there. Um, yes, it, full, it actually, full disclosure, we do have a uh, SIBO on the website uh, the, for right now. So uh, but it, it take is, what I say it, with a grain of salt, I suppose. It, when we marketed it, you know, when we sent out and spammed people on the new product launch and and, uh, and we talked about it on here. I mean, the, the the multiplier. I know even though it's the same as the SPX, you know, is an advantage. Uh, you know, I have a, a large trader, um, and we were speaking about the uh, the spreads between the SPX, and I go, and he goes, hey, I moved over to the uh, SPY, and I was hoping you could help me on the commissions, because he goes, you know, I've been trading the SPY all day, and I just realized i got to do 10 times as much of the SPY to get the leverage I had in the SPX, and I'm like, well, you know, that's one of the benefits or the cons. So I'm like, hey, why don't you check out the SPX PMs, and if you've taken a look at the spreads on there, they're very, very narrow compared to the SPX. They are. So now, they are. now he's, I mean, he's exclusively trading the SPX PM. Where all, I mean, this guy's hundred up, two hundred up, three hundred up, and all he was trading was the SPX. Then went to the spy for the tighter market, and now he's over at the PMs. And uh, and with that settlement, I mean, I got to imagine that product is just going to continue to uh, take off. Have you oh, seen? I, have you seen I much up? So. Oh, that's good. I see, you don't you think so? No, he said I, I think so. Um, I think no, I, I you know I think it will. It's got tighter markets. You know the 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 question is, you know I'm not sure if they'll get the huge re, the whole huge institutional that they're looking for. But if you're a retail trader, it makes a lot of sense. And there's going to be a ton of liquidity because of the the maker taker stuff and all of the electronic trading groups that want to get in there. So the liquidity's there, and so is. Uh, a lot of the other factors. It's just, you know, the the, you know, that maker taker model is gonna may cause problems for kind of mid market trading. And actually, the one interesting thing is you can actually kind of figure out what the big pit wants to do based on the quotes of the of the of the, the PM. So oh, if they're if they're if they're bit tighter on the bid and. Versus tighter on the offer, you can actually yeah. figure out what the big pit wants to do. I'm looking that, at the volume that, today, though. Maybe really I should shut my mouth. I got like, you know, 20, 
thirty calls across the board in November. So yeah, I'm looking at the numbers. They did about two thousand contracts in the SPX PM. They've been averaging about fifty six hundred lately. So they're, they the numbers have gapped up a little bit. And like we said, everyone should keep in mind these are ten X multipliers, so that they don't directly correlate to uh, to SPY options numbers. That's that's ten times the number when you look at it in a pure value sense. That's still small. That's still yeah, small. But, oh yeah, it's still very small. And I think it's interesting too. You mentioned you know the ads they're running on my site, and they are hitting that that 10x thing head on. That's always been something that they've been dodging in recent years because it made it sound like it was too big and too weighty for the retail audience. But now they're hitting that head on saying, hey, look, our contract has that added value for the uh, the high-end retail guy. I think to me that that's really more reflective of just the continued evolution of the retail space that you would have exchanges actively going after them now with these types of contracts and with their marketing saying hey look you guys are savvy enough now to realize that you have to do a lot of size and spy to get done the same thing you can get done in the spx with fewer contracts we're going to come right after you as opposed to dodging that so that to me is really yeah, interesting well, the, oh good the big the big push i you know about four or five years ago was uh move from the spx to the spy and a lot of people did because the market was tighter you know you could look at a a two-point wide spread that would reflect a 20-point right wide spread in the SPX, and people were were more willing to pay the 10x in commission because the slippage was less and it, it made more sense. Um, if you can get both, hey, a tight market and something that settles in the PM, you know, I mean, the, the big thing with the SPX was the uh, that 14 hours of limbo from the Thursday expiration to the SOQ on Friday morning that you know a lot of people felt was decided by a uh, you know tarot card and a Voodoo. Ouija board yeah. Friday morning <laughs> and Goldman Sachs you know and, and Goldman <laughs> right yeah. um, having sat in on more than a few opening rotations in the SPX I can tell you that that's not exactly far off from how it works <laughs> right somebody was making money and nobody would tell you you could call S and P and they'd say well there's a spreadsheet well send me the spreadsheet well there there is one um, but we don't really necessarily disclose who's has it and what's on it. Um, I see the exchanges as you know advocating, hey, look, you know, if if liquidity was what you wanted in the PM settlement, all right, here you go. So save some money on commissions. Um, yeah, I think it's big, and you know, in the same time, you didn't see a lot of movement from the RUT to the IWM. You saw some, but uh, the Russell was always electronically traded and, and you know efficient as, as far as the execution went. So there was a less people moving from the RUT to the IWM. Uh, I think you'll see a lot of people move back from SPY to uh, the the PM contract. Well, I mean, the, and there's more than that with the, you know, the SPX PM has some of those tax, implica tax implications again, and there's all sorts of different things that make sense with switching to that PM. And, you know, the night, the, in the end, though, that PM is going to tighten up the AM as well. So, which is, Yeah, they, you know, they have that 60-40 long-term. Yeah, uh, similar to similar to trading futures. Yeah. The old mm. Senator Rostenkowski rule. I love anybody who says a bad thing about Dan Rostenkowski should uh, should go back to where they came from because I'm not a fan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love old Rosty. One of, the few, one of the few places he could still get a standing ovation right after he got out of his halfway house was when he came down to the floor of the SIBO. Yeah, <laughs> people still loved him down there. Mm -hmm. And John, I think it's inter interesting for you to watch this, and you have to keep an eye on this for us, because your customers and your audience or that high-end retail are the exact sweet spot that they're going after for this SPX PM. So I'll, I'll be very curious. Sounds like you're not hearing a lot of uptake right now, but I'm, I'd be kind of curious in the coming months if you hear more people calling up and saying, hey, is this, I want to trade this, is this something I should be doing, I want to take advantage of that that 10x multiplier, you know. So keep an eye on this for us if you don't mind, and uh, yeah, maybe absolutely. report back now and again on what you're hearing on the on the the retail SPX PM from because I'm very curious. I'm sure a lot of other people are as well. Yeah, I mean we, we have a large banner up on the options chain page, and I you know I put a red disclaimer up on the website uh, day one when they launched, and we've emailed you know to close to I think 200,000 clients. So I'm hoping that it, it, it you know it generates some uh, some uh, energy and, and people get into trading it. Sounds good. All right, thank you for that, Mr. Grigas. That is going to do it for the old express block, and now we're going to roll right into. Around the Block. Around the Block. All right, and welcome to Around the Block. And before we 
dive into what's coming up on our screens. Let's do a last final update. Oh, Johnny, not going to like this on Netflix. Uh, Down 30. Yeah. Not, oh, it's my trading gosh. 87, 30, and 87 half now in the after hour. So it's down another almost about 9, 10 points since we talked about it last. <laughs> so the Widowmaker just making widows left and right and sending good children to community colleges. <laughs> Everywhere across the world. Yes, country. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what a beast, man. Wow, Netflix. This is like this ne- this stock has been almost a microcosm of the tech bubble in the 90s in and of itself. The explosive run up and the just painful, painful tra- trajectory down. I mean, obviously, it is not it's not out yet. They're still around, but it's it is amazing to see how much this parallels what happened back in the uh, Yahoo 400 days of you know, the mid to late 90s. <laughs> Okay, so I mean, you saw the Einhorn and the Green Green Mountain Coffee sell off, and I was picking up falling knives in that market uh, late last week. But the, there was a good bounce. I mean, on, on one day it traded intraday down to sixty two and in, in change, and then it, and then it bounced uh, about nine dollars, and that's when I was able to cover my uh, calls for uh, a small loss. But I mean, Netflix will probably have a big bounce this week. Anybody, uh, any idea like what level? I mean, there's got to be an intraday. Uh, you know, buying at the money call move here that that you can you know make two hundred percent. So anyway, this any, is any no, this is not. I'm, I disagree with you one hundred percent. This is not like that. John, like, let it is, go, baby. Apple, Apple, maybe <laughs> Netflix. No, this is a piece of junk. Any money, any money spent in Netflix is you're better off taking that dollar bill and wiping your hind end with it because Just, hey, at Greg, least it'll have served some utility for you. Let us let us know if you put that in the kids' custodial account. No, that, just, that'll be my. Just give, uh, us, just give us the heads up. Post your kids' custodial account so we can all trade the other yeah, side yeah. of it. Maybe we'll cut some we'll cut some checks for your for your son there so he can get a nice, yeah, well, that, a nice that's, home. That's what tutor. you should do is you should set up a custodial account and then your anti-custodial account. And then we'll all take do ten a times the size. Our, yeah, we'll just take ten times the size. Exactly. <laughs> Here's a good. I'll end, up, I'll end up buying calls this week, and I'll let you guys know how that works out. But uh, <laughs> it won't be good. You're a glutton, sir. Here's here's the question. I, I, I want you to know I'm gonna be rooting for you. I'm taking no position in Netflix, so uh, I'm gonna be totally cheerleading it when it rallies, and gonna be going green kiss, green kiss, green kiss. <laughs> Yeah, any position I would take in Netflix right now would would only be on the long premium side. I I've, I've seen too much and been burned too many times to go to touch any short premium with a 10-foot pole in uh, in Netflix right now. Yeah, here's a question: Which end of the peers trade would you rather be on? The rim Netflix peers trade. Who who who's going to zero first? Well, rim Rim at least has a a real business model and. Uh, and like subscribers and and, and things that, that people use. They have that Canadian factor too that they will support and, them. And to the they've end. got all of Canada on their service. So. <laughs> Netflix. Everybody hates Netflix. They did. Every, I mean, I, I'm sorry. Who, it, given a choice in California, who do people hate more, Netflix or Dr. Conrad M- Murray? What do you think? <laughs> I think Netflix hates itself. I really do. They do. They do. You know. You know. They're like the. They're like the bad guy in in every SVU show that is like <laughs> crying in the corner and and he's like I didn't mean you got out of hand. She said she loved me. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, they they instead of I would NFLX, take Netflix in that one though. In the in the ne- Netflix SVU and and SVU. In no, the Netflix, Netflix will get rib trade. I I think Netflix is going to go down harder, quicker. I, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, we're calling it the stock, stock victims unit. <laughs> <laughs> Any chance that Netflix will be bought out? I mean, the, you know, they you know, lost well, two thirds the, of their valuation in the last. I uh, buy Netflix. The interesting thing about that split with uh, the whole Quickster fiasco was that some people were speculating that that was actually done to separate their physical distribution centers from the streaming so they could sell the streaming to Amazon. Amazon didn't want to have physical presences in all these various states because they're having all these affiliate issues and sales tax problems, so they couldn't really sell the streaming to them. Uh, so that was that was one of the real... I guess that, that kind of went south because the Quickster thing is no more. But it was an interesting. One of, the, one of the more interesting speculations I saw regarding why they would actually go to those ridiculously extreme setups of two separate companies for that and uh so yeah, obviously amazon growing in the streaming space it would make sense for them to acquire something like that i don't know why anyone, anyone would want the dvd by mail business that's, that's like making buggy whips today not, not exactly a growth industry that would, be, uh, that would work well with um 
with like a red box or kind of a red box kind of concept or a, you know, so there, there is some value there, you know, block, blockbuster might make some sense, but whoever owns blockbuster, if they get blockbuster network. and Netflix together, you could have two horrible companies, but two big names that maybe you could salvage something out of. I saw someone joking the other day, like, what a great concept for a company. Uh, you know, you walk into a store and they have all the movies you want right there and you take them home with you and instantly, no, <laughs> no, uh, no waiting. So they were joking. I, that the I, mod, I kind of, I kind of agree back. with that. I, I went into a video store and rented a movie and it took, it was, it was unbelievable. I was like, oh, here's all these movies I want my son to see and I have no chance of getting them through any other means, you know? Yeah. If you go, if you go red box, you're kind of out of luck. You have yeah. you have current stuff and that's it. And if you go, um, you know, if you go online, you're kind of limited as well. It is kind of funny. We we did pass a, a video store. We were driving on this weekend somewhere in the suburbs, and we passed a, an actual mom and pop video store. And I said to myself, "My God, they they still exist." Uh, take a picture. Otherwise, how are you going to go rent your adult movies if those video stores don't exist? <laughs> Um, yeah, let's close out the trading block then, talking about the other side of that trade, which is, of course, Amazon. They have earnings. They're an actual company with actual earnings coming out tomorrow uh, after the bell, I believe. Edit, John. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, Amazon up about close at 237 today. So they're still feeling the uh, the strong tailwinds here from their post. They only had a little bit of a sell-off dip below 200 uh, a while back when they first announced the Prime streaming, but I think that's since been a, a boon for them as well as some of the other moves they're making. This People thinking this Kindle Fire might might uh, er, have the first the, the first product to actually have a chance at eroding some iPad market share. So I'm, I'm generally uh, looking pretty favorable here on uh, on Amazon. Mr. Grigas, what are you doing so I can take the uh, the other the other side of that, sir? Uh, yeah, I'm a fan of Amazon too. I went to a uh, breakfast panel meeting. And there was a head guy from Microsoft, and he just was going on and on about uh, the approach Amazon has and some of the new products they were coming out with. And uh, one of the things that he was subscribing to in one of the test markets was Amazon Fresh, and that's where they deliver food to your house. And I, and I know we have Peapod and and other uh, competing uh, companies that deliver food to your door. But they had he gets the same thing over and over because he's got young kids, so you know formula, diapers, juice. You get the same thing, and one week they had switched to these uh, plastic bags, and when he picked them up, they they ripped. So he sent them an email. They switched back to the paper. Next time he got the uh, delivery, it was in paper bags, also with a bouquet of flowers, apologizing for what they had done. I mean, so <laughs> I, I mean, it was like I was you know very, you know coming from customer service and what I do here, very impressive. And, and that type of size company that can do that for one email, I mean, it would kind of it kind of says a lot about the company and 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 the fact that they're coming out with a, a comp- competitor to the iPad and iPad two. Um, I think agree with you that they do have a real chance. So if you were going to get long it, you probably want to not do that trade now since I put my two cents in. <laughs> yeah, well, the one thing I'll say is that, yes, you know, it's really tempting to get long in Amazon in front of these earnings. But I think if Apple's shown us anything, it's that there are much better ways to get long than going out and buying the underlying. Uh, you know, we look at Amazon and – all the paper flow is bullish. All the movement is bullish. There is, you know, it's starting to develop that Apple skew. You know, I'm not saying that it's not going up on earnings, but I would much rather buy the October weekly 250 calls for $3.50 than go out and buy the the underlying. You're just asking for problems. And the vol is not that bad that you can't go out and and use options. This is one of those clear examples, just like Apple, where owning the options is the safer, smarter play than owning the underlying. Looks like here you know, the ATM uh, weekly straddle went out at about seventeen bucks with yeah, about an eight, eighty and a vol. Half. So not exactly a, I guess, not exactly a super pricey move. Expecting some movement, obviously, but yeah, not. I mean, the, it's, they're looking at almost ten percent. So. Uh, and if you look at where Amazon is trading, that straddle goes out seventeen and a half bucks. You can get the two fifties, which are within that price, for uh, you know three dollars and fifty cents. That is a much better play. Uh, my personal inclination, based on what I'm seeing, is I think Amazon is going to apple it up on this. And uh, just looking, I think the the two twenty five calls are cheap. So if I was going to do anything, or the two twenty five puts are cheap. That's kind of the way I'd be going. Now, I'm less certain of I, – I'm uh, Apple, I was 100% certain they were going down. Amazon, I'm 
uh, I'm leaning a little bit. I'll know a lot better tomorrow, but um, just you know, the fact when it was sitting at 230, 225, I would have said no way. Back up when it was over, got toward 240. When it when it broke 240, I started to, to wonder whether whether it, it was going to be able to go a lot further. There you go. You can leg into that nice uh, 225, 250 strangle, Mr. Sebastian, and then you're then you're set for life. I, well, all I'm saying, and, and stop me if I sound crazy, Mark, but like, stop. Why would you buy <laughs> a stock up, you know, five percent in the last week? Into their earnings. Yeah, I, I rarely have ever trade underlying, let alone going into an earnings <laughs> scenario. I mean, I mean th- th- and yet there are people that are going to be out there buying out of earnings, and they are suckers. I'm sorry. No easy way to put it. If you're buying Amazon tomorrow, you're a sucker. Even if you win, you're a sucker. <laughs> of course, that being said, I do have some Ford underlying. Uh, so I do have some underlying going I, well, into earnings. That, that's a little that's different. A rare, that's a rare, stock. Yeah, exactly. That's a, rare, that's a rare example of me having earn, underlying going into an, uh, an earnings event. And we do have some uh, ratio put spreads off against that. But, yeah, aside from that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be touching Amazon underlying here. I would definitely be uh, – like I said, I like that weekly straddle. Maybe you could uh, leg into an iron condor with the 250, 225 strike like you were saying. And then you're, then you're set for life yet again or at least for the end of the week. <laughs> All right. That's going to do it for the Around the Block segment. That's also going to do it for this 100th episode of the Option Block. I want to thank all of our all my partners in crime for joining me on the program today. And, of course, we do send our well wishes off to Uncle Mike and his family. We hope everything there is uh, is taking a turn for the better, and we hear that it is, so that's, that's good news to all of us. We also want to thank Monday Mike for joining us on the show today, a.k.a. Mike Cavanaugh. He had to run a little bit early, so listen you should always you should all go visit know your options inc and check out their portfolio review and see what else they can do for you over there at know your options because they have a lot to offer aside from managing your options portfolio they can do quite a few things for you over there so by all means go check it out and of course mr sebass what is coming up in the land of slinky.com aka optionpit.com well, a lot of things. You know, uh, we're going to be at the Traders Expo in Las Vegas. I'm going to, speaking of the Kindle Fire, I believe I will be the only display giving away a Kindle Fire. Oh, that's you doing that? I, I thought I thought you said something that the show was in. You're, you're giving away a Kindle Fire? We are giving away a Kindle Fire. We're going to have one. I say, do you actually there, have one? You're going to be able to try out at our display center. Why don't you bring it over here to our offices first so we can play with it a little bit first before it, you, you know, give it away? You know, we can. It's actually getting delivered to our hotel. <laughs> I was going to say, it's kind of you're cutting it close on the release date there. Yeah, no, they're they're literally we've got it, you know we've got an it, we've got it coming to the Paris Hotel on that on the day that it gets released. So I'm so. sorry, that in and of itself is an enormous indicator that just it's going to start eroding iPad mind share because every trade show you ever go to has the booth to get it, to win the iPad or iPad 2 and now all of a sudden it's the Kindle Fire. So that no, in and no, of itself no. every other booth I can tell you this every other booth is going to have iPads. Yes, but there, but there will be one. There will be at least one and you never saw anyone giving anything else away but an iPad. Well, you got to remember though I'm an Apple hater. <laughs> That's true. You and I are degenerate Apple haters. So, uh, I, I am such an Apple hater. I refuse to give away iPads. I would have given away the regular Kindle. <laughs> That's true. I forgot to allocate for your bias. Yes. So forget what I said about that indicator. It is it is meaningless. We we had Samsung Galaxies all set up. <laughs> so. There you go. That'll drive the uh, the subscribers and the business cards. <laughs> So, listeners, by all means, check out Mark at the Traders Expo if you're going to be out there. Or sure, check out his uh, his videos online. Are they going to webcast? Are you going to do any presentations out there? Uh, I'm doing two presentations, one on Friday and one on Saturday. And, yeah, we're going to be doing a live demo every three times a day uh, where I'm going to kind of be live trading in the market and talking about what I'm looking at. It's actually going to be a really cool interactive booth. We're going to have a competition just you know, we're gonna give everybody a couple thousand bucks to go out and trade options, see who can do the best over a couple of days, basically uh, the otherwise known as the dartboard competition. And we're, you know, we're just gonna be having a great time. Now, another thing coming up in December of 2000, uh, December 3rd, myself, Russell Rhodes, and uh, the Street. Uh, so the SIBO, the Street, and myself, we're doing a three-way presentation in New York City. Uh, trading the VIX. So Gregus, in the it's gonna, it should be pretty awesome. All right, listeners, look forward to those two. If you're going to be in Vegas, by all means, check out Mark's booth and win yourself a Kindle Fire. 
And Mr. Grigas, what is coming up in the land of OX, sir? Well, nothing on the live event side, but on our uh, free webinars that you can register on the site, uh, one of my favorite webinars, The Good, Bad, or Ugly, Earnings Events and Government Actions. Great Clint Eastwood movie or great coaching uh, investment uh, webinar. You, you have to register and find out. Uh, but the last one for October is on the 28th. Those are free under the Educate tab. Uh, we also have our wish list that expires in about seven days as well. If you go into the uh, account overview screen, click on the wish list center. Uh, we have four of them out there right now. Multi-trade saved orders, ROI on trade calculator. Mark symbols as optional in watch list and, you know, Obviously, that one is not doing so well because for a firm like Options Express, if you need a symbol next to your security to tell you it has options, maybe you should be trading stock. Uh, and also, <laughs> Futures Options, look up in the Alert Manager. So, vote early, vote often. Uh, ends next week, 31st. Thank you for that, Mr. Grigas. And, of course, we want all of our listeners to surf on over to theoptionsinsider.com and check out the new revised 2.0 Options Insider. It's a, uh, it'll be a fun place for all of our listeners to play around and makes it much easier for you to access the radio content we hear on the old radio network. And I want to thank all of you out there for downloading and streaming and subscribing to this program over our past 100 episodes. It's been a great run, and we look forward to doing yet another 100 in the coming weeks and months. So thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time right here on the Option Block. Thanks, everybody. Happy 100. Woo! Become a part of the Option Block. Just visit www.theoptionsinsider.com slash forum to post a question for the hosts. You can also submit questions to twitter.com slash option block or leave a voicemail at 312-544-9356. Make it interesting and your question just might make it on the air. The Options Block is property of the Options Insider Incorporated. All rights reserved. presentation of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com/radio or search for Options Insider Radio in iTunes.